Hi, I'm Chris with the irrigation information website smartirrigation.com and today we're going to show you how to change a less efficient spray system into a more efficient drip system. The first disadvantage of a spray system is it puts out water much faster than the landscape can absorb it and especially when there's a slope or any landscape fabric that amplifies the issue. So we're getting water running off and pooling in places we don't want. The second disadvantage is the spray system isn't targeted. So it doesn't water just the plants we want covered but it waters the entire area which wastes water and also encourages weed growth we don't want. Another disadvantage is over time the shrubs can grow over the heads and that'll block the distribution to other shrubs. So to properly water the shrub bed and address the issues we mentioned earlier, we're going to retrofit this spray zone into a drip system. And that'll allow us to get the water down much slower and in more targeted fashion to the plants that need it. And we're going to show you two methods on how to do that. Regardless of which method you choose, almost all drip systems require two key components. One is a filter to filter out small particles of sand and debris that can get into the water system and it will plug up key components of your drip system, reducing its lifespan. Next is a pressure regulator. This reduces the pressure down to 30 to 40 psi, which keeps the system from blowing apart over time. A convenient way to set up a drip system is by using one of these. It's called a drip retro and it looks a lot like a sprinkler head. It actually installs exactly like a sprinkler head, but it doesn't have the sprinkler head components. It actually has a filter and a pressure regulator built into it. And because of this, we can actually use it for a brand new system, or we can use it to retro a system like we're gonna show you today. First step is we're gonna flag the heads we wanna eliminate in the existing spray zone. Because we have to cap or turn off the majority of these heads, it's important to decide which one is the best one to use for your retro. We don't want to stagnate the line, especially in an area where the ground freezes and you can't winterize it if it's stagnated. We have to be able to get all the water out in the fall. So we want to pick the exact right head that we can use that doesn't stagnate the line. We've decided to use the head at the very end of the line to install our retro. And that's because all the water flows down to this head from all the other ones. And then we can actually turn off the ones upstream. So this is the head we want to retro. And fortunately, it's the exact same brand as our retro. So instead of having to dig the entire head up, we can actually just remove the insides of this one and put the insides of the retro in here instead. So what you want to do is you want to take a pair of pliers and counterclockwise on the top of the head and if it starts to turn in the ground you want to get another pair of pliers underneath it to stop doing that so we don't want it to turn in the ground okay now we get to take apart the retro and show you the parts we have the screen filter and the pressure regulator is right in there this is the threaded part to put on various fittings, fittings as you need it. I'm going to drop the screen filter into the case. And then we're going to put the top on again. We're going to tighten it on. Then we're going to get our wrench and wrench tight it on carefully, not too tight, until it stops. Now that the retro is installed, the next step is to decide which fitting we're going to use to install into our drip line. For method one, we're going to go with a brown drip line that has built-in emitters every foot, that has a pressure compensating uh, system where the emitter at the very end puts out the same amount of water as the one at the beginning, no matter what the pressure is. So uh, brown is compatible with brown, so we're going to use this one. This brown fitting has half-inch female threads, while this retro has half-inch male threads. And we recommend you use a, a 
the thread seals tape before you install the fitting. Just like this. Always go clockwise with your thread seal tape. And you only need a couple layers. And you put the fitting on and go clockwise. Hold it as tight as you can, but the base is starting to turn. So you'll need a tool, like a crescent wrench, to stop it from turning. Turn a couple more, and then you can turn it to the direction you need. Now that we have the fitting on, we can just push in the drip line into the fitting. And brown fittings and browned drip line do not need clamps. Now the next thing we're going to do after we've attached this line is we're going to install it in the shrub bed itself. So we want to lay the drip line close to the roots. So the emitters usually spread out in a foot on each direction of the emitter and they're spaced a foot apart. Might change a little bit if it's downhill. What I'm using is a garden stake to stake it down so it doesn't move. I'm going to get this up there close to the plants. Okay, it's somewhat bendable, but you don't want to kink it, so be careful not to bend it too much. Now that the drip line is at the end of the shrub bed, the next thing we want to do is cut it off past the last emitter a few inches, and that's we've already done, and then we want to flush the line to get any debris out of it. Turn it on. Now that the line's been flushed, we're going to show you a couple methods to cap the end, which is the final step. First method is actually you can bend it over and kink it, and then you get electrical tape, and that becomes an end. Or a better one that I like is actually getting a half inch ball valve and a fitting that's compatible, a brown fitting, male adapter. We put on some Teflon tape. We thread it into the ball valve. Tighten it a bit with a wrench. And then we can insert this part in to our tubing. And it doesn't need a clamp. And then you have an end which can be used to flush or to blow it in the fall. Now that we've retroed that side of the spray zone, we're going to retro this side of the spray zone and we're going to use the second method, which is using a poly drip line that we can insert drip system components into rather than having them built in. Unlike the drip barb fittings we used with the previous brown drip line, this side we're going to have to use a standard insert fitting to go into the half inch poly line. So it's a half inch insert by female threaded combo elbow in this case. Here we replaced the spray body with the retro just like we did in method one and now it's time to install the drip line which is a black poly which means you're going to have to use a clamp to do it properly unlike the other side. So you go like that and we get a half inch gear clamp on there and tighten it on. Now the next step is to install the drip line along the plants. We've noticed this one is quite rigid in its coil, so we're gonna roll it out to let it relax first. Now that we have our poly line in place, we want to get something that will get the water to the plants. So we have a big variety of components that we can use. In this case, we want to focus on using what is called a drip emitter. And we have a drip emitter tool here that we can use to install 
or actually remove emitters if needed. So this is a drip emitter. This happens to be a one gallon per hour variety. They come in a few different varieties. And this is a, the drip emitter insert tool that it goes into right in the end like that. And then you can use it to push in the line. We want to be on the ups, uphill side of the plant so the water runs down obviously. And we only need one for such a small plant, we believe in this case. And when you insert it, you want to make sure you don't push right through to the back end of the line and puncture it as well, or you will have damaged your line. So carefully push it in and then you can retract. We have a plant that's a bit too far from the actual drip line to use just a drip emitter. So we're going to use distribution tubing to get the water closer to the plant, more focused. So what we do is we install this end of a quarter inch distribution tubing by pushing it onto the emitter. Then you want to cut it to the length you need. Then we're going to put it through a tubing stake that holds it in place. And this is a bug, bug cap that goes on the end. Self-explanatory what it does. Keeps bugs from getting into the line. And you push it in place where you want it. Make sure you have this little bit of slack on this spider tube so it doesn't get stretched and pull off your emitter. Now that we've installed the end cap, flushed the lines and installed emitters to every plant that needed it, we're all done with method two. And the last step is to cap the sprays or turn them off, the ones that we don't need anymore. So to shut off these spray heads, you can either dig down and remove the head, put in a threaded cap, or you can use a less permanent method that we're gonna to do today and turn off the spray nozzle with a flat screwdriver. So to turn off the nozzle, you insert the flat screwdriver into the adjustment screw on the top and turn clockwise until it completely turns off. And there you have it. Now you know how to retrofit a spray zone into a drip zone, which may not be needed now in the rain. But if you'd like any more smart irrigation tips, check out our website at smartirrigation.com. Remember to hit like and subscribe.